Hey folks, it's Tim. I'm covering uh, Taltronics TF03. Uh, this is the biggest light in their current uh, rather modest lineup. They currently only have the TF01, TF02. Um, the TF01 I previously covered is a two cell uh, AA light that could also be converted into a single uh, cell light by removing the extension here. Now, before we dive into the light itself, I did want to cover the packaging and accessories. As with pretty much all of their lights, it comes with this pretty nifty uh, presentation plastic case. Uh, everything is packaged uh, nicely in here. It's extendable. It does come with, uh, it, which is rather rare nowadays, is a full-sized holster. It actually covers the entire light. So for those of you who are rather particular about keeping their lights in uh, pristine condition, you know, this would come in very handy for that because like I said, it pretty much just protects uh, just about every square inch with the exception of perhaps the side of the head here. But beyond that, it does cover the entire light nicely. Now the holster itself unfortunately doesn't have a uh, quick release Velcro feature. So one would have to undo their belt to wrap it around, but um, figure once it's on, it'll stay there. It does also come with a plastic D-loop here. Rounding off the rest of the accessories, there was also two spare O-rings, a rubber tail cap switch, and uh, thoughtfully a little magnet that could be, because it is a two cell light and if your cells are flat tops and they don't make connection with each other, you can use um, this magnet and place it between the two cells. But of course, if you're not uh, comfortable with doing so for the fear of creating short, then obviously you're going to have to get yourself um, raised tip cells. They also included a nice little lanyard here that does have a mini attachment ring because um, the attachment point is actually very small and uh, you cannot clip it to the lobster claw directly. Now just to cover off on the features and specs quickly, it does utilize a Cree XML U2 LED capable of putting out 900 lumens, although I wasn't quite able to achieve that in my runtime testing. It does also project the beam out to 260 meters and it runs on two 18650 size batteries or four CR123s. I do not believe it supports four 16340s because that's out of the uh, Volta spec. It is uh, waterproof down IPX8 down to two meters and the high as mentioned, 900 lumens for two hours, medium of 272 lumens at seven hours, and then finally low of 20 lumens at 100 hours. Now jumping into the design and features of the light, one thing that's readily noticeable is that this light does have some heft to it. Um, it does feel like a very, very solid light, and I suppose it could be used for um, you know, self-defense purposes. Again, not that I advocate violence, but should the situation rise for it, um, you could kind of use it as a club. Uh, so starting at the top, there is a crenellated bezel that is nicely uh, deburred, so uh, no sharp, particularly sharp edges, nor is it fairly aggressive. There is no AR coating that I could discern on the glass itself, um, but this bezel is removable, allowing one easy access to the reflector. Now the only thing is that upon removal of that reflector, th while there is a groove around the um, LED, it's very, very difficult to center that reflector. So I'd be a little hesitant about removing it if your reflector is already perfectly centered. I spent probably a good few minutes just, you know, slowly screwing on the bezel because every if you screw it on a little bit fast, it does uh, move the reflector, I guess, through friction and decenters it. So now just half of the bezel are these aesthetic grooves here. Um, they do provide some texture here. So that way, when you're trying to remove the bezel, it does help a lot. And there, likewise, there's also these, uh, again, additional aesthetic grooves that I suppose could serve as heatsink fans along with um, the heatsink grooves that are here. Now moving beyond that, one thing that I thought was a little curious was this uh, machine piece here that is actually rotatable. I mean, it doesn't really serve any purposes and, you know, again, it has features the company's logo on it, but if you wanted to, you could probably align it with either this end because there is no engraving on this side, or I guess I suppose you could align it with this end that does feature the engraving. Now, this is a dedicated two cell light, meaning that there are no extension tubes. Um, if it's two 18650s, it doesn't convert into a single cell or perhaps a uh, three cell, three CR123 size light. 
The tail cap does feature rather aggressive crenellation, so I suppose you could use it to break glass or, again, for self-defense purposes or whatnot. And as previously mentioned, there is a single attachment point for the lanyard, but does require the use of that little mini uh, ring because it is so small. And because these tail cap cards do stick out beyond the rubber tail switch cover, it does allow the TF-03 to tail stand, although perhaps not the most stable, but it would suffice in a pinch. The switch in the tail cap is a reverse mechanical clicky switch. For those not familiar with that term, what that simply means is one must fully depress the switch, you heard the click, and then upon letting go, will the light turn on. So what this means is that you cannot use this for signaling purposes um, and contrast that with the forward clicky switch on the TF-01 where you can, well, not quite because it does cycle through the modes as you're uh, half pressing it. But as you can see, you do not need to fully depress the switch in order to turn the light on, right? Only when you want to get into the mode or fully turn it on do you fully depress that switch. But that's the difference between a reverse clicky and a forward clicky. Now peeking underneath the head of the light, there is a um, raised brass nodule that is spring-loaded. So one doesn't need to use uh, positive tip cells. However, though, again, keep in mind that one would require um, raised tips between the cells in order for the two batteries to make contact with each other. As can be seen here, there is no anodization on this end of the tube, or actually neither on that end of the tube, so you would not be able to lock out the light. However though, because of the uh, tail cap guards, and like I said, the reverse switch, I feel like um, accidental activation should be fairly difficult to achieve. The tail cap side is pretty much identical to the head side, just in smaller proportions. So as you can see, there is also another brass nodule there that is spring-loaded. Um, and again, no anodization on this end either. Nor are those uh, threads square cut, but I didn't have a difficult time threading this on. Now size and handling wise, it ranks as amongst the longest of my uh, two cell lights, although of course, um, this one's really more 2 times 17500 size versus the rest of these, which are true 2 times 18650 size lights. Um, although the head diameter of the TF-03 is just a bit smaller than um, these throwers. These throwers all feature around roughly about 2.5 inches in diameter, whereas the uh, TF-03 is more around 2.36 inches or 60 millimeters. Now from left to right, we have Surefire's M3LT, Shadow's TC500, Sunway Man's T40CS, Crelon's 7G5CS, Olight's M3X Triton, the XML2 version, uh, Tautronics TF03, and Lighten 7's Max L2A. Handling wise, as mentioned, it does have a good heft to it, and provided you hold it, I would say right about here, I don't have particularly large hands, I have about medium sized hands, uh, doesn't feel unbalanced, it does feel very nice in the hands. Of course, if you need to change modes, it does mean you would have to wield it in the overhand grip, uh, in which case, you know, that weight does contribute to a slight, you know, uh, unbalanced and head heaviness um, feeling when, when you're wielding the light in this mode. And of course, you do have to be a little mindful of those crenellations here so that you slot your thumb directly between the grooves uh, to activate the light. Overall, I would say it's pretty much on par as with the other uh, two cell lights, you know, because the other ones do have a little bit uh, heavier head. There is a slight indent here in flare so that you could probably um, use this in a cigarette grip, although, you know, not easily, but um, it is possible should one desire to do so. Fit and finish wise, as previously mentioned, you will immediately notice the heft of this light. It does convey a um, serious feeling of solidness. And as mentioned, um, in my time of uh, playing around with the light, it, it does feel very, very substantial um, in the sense that it could probably tolerate quite a bit of abuse. Now the anodization is very nicely finished in this matte finish, which is one of my favorite. Of course, that's subjective, but I wasn't able to detect any missing between the grooves here, um, although there were some minor spots missing around the sharp edges here, as you can see there. Now, the crenellations overall, very nicely finished and deburred. Um, likewise for the edges over here, fully deburred. I don't feel any leftover protrusions uh, along the edges of here. As with the TF-01, overall, there is very sparse um, 
laser engraving on the light, short of the Taltronics and as well as the one engraved here on the uh, raw aluminum, there really isn't any other types of engraving whatsoever beyond the caution hot surface over here near the throat of the light. They are all very nice and sharp with no blotchiness whatsoever. Now these crenellations on the tail cap is a little bit more aggressive than I would have liked, but again that's subjective. Of course there does have to be a fine balance because if you smooth that out too much then it kind of defeats the purpose of a um, strike bezel. So it does have to be a fine balance here. And as mentioned, this was really the only area, these specific uh, sharp corners here, that I was able to find any uh, anodization missing. But beyond that, the fin and finish is really, really good overall. Um, just as I've experienced with the TF-01, I didn't have any exposure to their lights previously, but the consistency between the two models leads me to believe there is very good quality control overall in the manufacture of their lights. Now digging into the UI of the light, this light features um, two different sets of modes that one can cycle through. So the first set, which is the default, does not include any blinkies uh, as part of cycling through. So what I mean by that is, as you have the light on, half press to cycle through to medium to low. There's three levels, so it's high, medium, and low. Always in that order. So as you can see, it doesn't pass through any strobes or whatnot. Now, in order to get to the second set of modes, one would turn on the light, enter the lowest mode, and wait at least about five seconds. You're going to see a blink, and then you shut off the light. Upon turning it on, this will now enter the secondary set of modes that does include the blinkies. So as you can see, it defaults back onto high, medium, low, a fixed rate strobe, sort of like a burst strobe. And last but not least, a SOS signal. To exit out of this secondary mode, you just need to go back into that low mode again, wait another five seconds for the blink, and then shut off the light. So then when you turn it back on, as you can see, there is no blinkies in this uh, original mode. So I currently have the shutter locked down to one two thousandth of a second, so that way you can see the center hotspot better. This is roughly about 20 degrees. Now I'm going to ease this up a little so you can see the overall beam profile. And this I would say it's roughly about 75, 75 degrees or so. And there's actually a secondary um, beam profile as I ease up the shutter that you can see on the outer fringes there. That total profile is roughly about 120 degrees, although when cast out to the wall, I don't think you're really going to see that. It's only because of its effect uh, up close against the uh, paper right now. So as a result of the crenellated bezel, when you place it um, head down, you will be able to see whether or not the uh, TF-03 is on. And in terms of beam profile wise, um, it actually does have a decently nice tight hot spot. And I'm actually going to bump this up a little bit more, the shutter speed meaning, to one two thousandth of a second so you could kind of get a better idea of that hot spot. I do have this locked into daylight white balance, but I would say this beam color that you're seeing on the screen is a little bit more purple than what I'm seeing in real life. And this hot spot is not that blue, it's probably a little bit more of a greenish tint. But Again, it's a very nice smooth transition without any uh, ringiness at all in the beam profile. It does have three outputs with um, pretty decently well spaced. The top level that I'm on right now, which is max, is 900 lumens. Then you have uh, medium, which is about 272 lumens. And then finally low of about 20 lumens. Now that brief flash that you saw was for it to engage the uh, secondary mode which I covered in the UI but let me actually bump this down now so even in low you could get an idea of the overall beam profile it pretty much stays the same it's just a little bit darker and I re-engage max and set this again fixed to 1 1600th of a second to give you a comparison to the Krillon 7G5CS, um, which actually has 
a um, tighter beam profile, but it has to, it really needs some um, room to get out there before it finally tightens up really well. But as you can see, the 7G5CS on the left has an overall uh, wider spill, but with a tighter hotspot. Now to be fair, the um, 7G5CS does have the larger and deeper reflector. So it is geared more towards throw than, say, the um, TF-03 is. As an initial conclusion, I, I gotta say, this is a very um, solidly built light, as mentioned. Um, the heft does convey a feeling of good quality. Overall, I didn't find any um, severe faults with the fit and finish of the light. However, the market for um, two cell throwers are, is relatively crowded with the likes of, you know, uh, Crelon 7G5CS, the Sunway Man T4CS, etc., etc. Um, there's many out there. So I suppose one, um, the thing that probably probably stands out above and beyond the fin finish is the UI where again you have two modes where you could hide one and go with just either high medium and low or you can enter the secondary mode and have high medium low along with the strobes and uh, blinkies. Style wise which is obviously subjective I do find their lights to be reasonably attractive and I do like the holster the full length holster that was included because as mentioned it does provide full protection for the light itself. Now if there was one thing subjectively that I wasn't particularly fond of about this light is the, re the use of a reverse clicky. I personally prefer forward clickies but I suppose it does work in the sense that if you have um, this light rolling around your bag or whatnot, you know, a slight half depress won't accidentally activate it. Uh, that's also especially relevant if because this light doesn't have anodized threads here and you can't lock it out. So um, the use of a reverse clicky does help in the sense of, um, you know, accidental half presses at least. But of course, you know, full press will still turn it on. Overall, I think it's a decently nice light, and its standout feature is its build quality. It does feel very substantial and should um, serve one's needs for many years to come. So that concludes this review, and as part of FTC disclosures, the TF-03 was provided by Tautronics.com for review. Thanks again for watching.